Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first story is titled, Psycho Lady Assaults My Little Sister. So, I've always read the posts on here and always thought how ridiculous, psychotic people could be. Well, unfortunately for my sister, S from now on, and I dealt with one such psycho idiot, PB. This all takes place last Friday afternoon. For a little background, I have a younger sister who is adopted and is also Colombian. So, compared to me, a pale, curly redhead, whose Irish decent cannot be mistaken for anything else, one can easily assume we have no relation at all to each other. Now, S is also special needs. She is high-functioning autistic and is only really comfortable with our parents, me, and my so of 6 years. S is physically 16, looks 11 twelfths, but is mentally 8 in reality. To the nightmare, I mean story. On Friday, I picked up S from her school. I help out my parents a lot, plus my S is my world. She is fortunate enough that she is able to attend a specialized school that caters specifically to kids with special needs. After I picked her up from school I had to run to the store known for car keys and red polos. S is wearing leggings with horses on them, her favorite animal, and a red tee with more horses, see where this is unfortunately going. We were in the grocery section and I was grabbing a few things for dinner that night. We were in the pasta aisle, which also means mac and cheese. This so happens to be S favorite food, plus she loves organizing the boxed and making the rows straight. I'm a couple feet away down the aisle, but still right there and keeping an eye on her, making sure she is okay. Enter Psycho Idiot. She rapidly approaches S, and my first thought was PB must be in a hurry for something in the aisle. No. I was very very wrong. PB, to S, where is the bread? S, stares only BC she doesn't talk to many people and is not okay with being randomly approached. PB, what are you? Deaf? I said, where is the bread? At this point PB is getting into S personal space, major trigger for her and people raising voices, and I'm already rushing to intervene. Me, ma'am, S is not an employee, you are frightening her, please leave her alone. During this I have physically placed myself between S and PB. PB, however, doesn't accept this. PB, ha. You're just covering for this lazy employee trying to avoid work. Me, attempting to keep my voice as even and calm as possible for S's sake, you need to leave my S alone. Now. You have entered her personal space and continually raised your voice. She clearly is not dressed like an employee and is acting less like one. Furthermore, you need to respect S and no one, worker or not, should be talked to like you just did to a little girl. PB, well I never. She is being a lazy retard and needs to do her job. And more racial slurs plus ranting here, I don't remember all she said because I was still keeping an eye on S and was more concerned with her. During all this, S has now hidden behind our shopping cart and is rocking back and forth, while covering her ears. PB, realizing her ranting is not getting S to tell her where bread is, decides the next option is to reach and grab S by the hair? Why she thought this would make a real employee help is beyond me. S starts screaming and I immediately slap PB hand away and remove her from S. PB, how dare you? Do you know WHOIAM? You are a worse employee than that idiot. I'm calling the police. You assaulted me. Me, go right the hell ahead idiot. I'd like to see you try. PB storms off to find the, the manager at this point. I immediately turn and try to calm S down and lay down with her, this helps S, and start to hum a little. She is still upset, but is starting to calm a little. PB returns, sadly, with manager, M, in tow. PB is going on and on about being assaulted and how S and I need to be fired ECT. M, hello, what occurred? PB is claiming you assaulted her. Me, actually. She physically grabbed S, and yanked her hair because PB believed S was an employee, despite me saying many times she is not. I had to forcibly remove PB from S head. So, if you call me defending my autistic sister assault, then go ahead. M is confused as he heard a very different story. PB, it's too late now idiot. I didn't do anything wrong. 
You're just mad you failed to pretend you and S don't work here and are now losing you jobs. M, P, B, neither of these women work here. You assaulted this girl and if anyone is pressing charges it would be S if you'd like I can pull up security footage. Now, you can either leave right now, or be escorted by security. That is your choice to make. PB now getting the picture that she is in major trouble tried to excuse her way out, but ultimately forcibly removed by security. But not before getting her information. M offers to give us everything we needed as comp, but I was more worried about S and getting her out. So, M gave us gift cards for future trips and I got S back home as quickly as possible. Once home, and after helping S calm down, I called the police and reported PB. The M told me he would provide the footage if needed. I told the police everything that happened, PB's name and information, and that M has footage of the event. For anyone wondering S is doing well, but doesn't want to go anywhere near the bullseye store, and is refusing to interact with anyone but me right now. She is having night terrors, but I'm staying with parents and am sleeping in S room with her currently to help S out and care for her. Edit, corrected my spelling of Colombian. I must have missed that when I was typing everything out. Sorry. Thank you for everyone with the kind words. It's been stressful and it's been hard seeing my sister going through this. We are pressing charges, hence calling the police once I had gotten my sister home. I am thankful to say my boss understands the situation and fortunately I am able to work from home if needed, so I have been staying with my parents and working from home while helping out. My sister went through a major breakdown, understandably so, and is recovering. To those who think this is fake, I'm sorry you think this, and honestly, I wish it was. In no world would I wish PB's behavior on anyone, but especially not my sister. Update, to everyone telling me to give my sister a high five, done. She's been happily drawing today and is currently enjoying a massive bowl of mac and cheese. And all of her favorite stuffed animals are sitting at the table enjoying some as well. Our parents are looking for a good therapist in the area for my sister who uses play therapy, I believe that is what they said, don't quote me please. Yes, I know I seemed too calm considering the circumstances, but I knew trying to stay even tempered was the best thing at the time for my sister. That being said, if someone said anything like that about her to me, with her not present, they would have had a drag down fight and I would have gone for the throat. I wanted nothing more than to hurt PB. I just knew trying to take care of my sister was more important and me responding that way would have done more harm than good. The next story is titled, Shut down a Karen by being super loud, I left retail a few years ago and noticed a dramatic improvement in my physical and mental health, largely due to the reduced contact with the listless cattle you see in the stores. However, it seems that the customer service vibe never completely washes off, because I was recently accosted in a liquor store by a woman with a jean jacket and the all too familiar haircut we all know and hate. The particular store in question is part of a chain set up like a reduced size Sam's Club but the only things they sell are booze and cigars. Great place to blow a paycheck. I got to leave work a little early due to working some extra hours at the beginning of the week, and I was completely fried. The plan was to grab a craft beer I'd never tried and maybe some slightly pricier bourbon and just chill. My work's dress code was flexibly business casual, so I was wearing dress shoes and slacks with a dark polo which is regrettably similar to the store's uniform, only some of the associates wore aprons and all of them had the store name embroidered on the polos. I was knelt down near the end of a beer aisle when I overhear a woman talking to her boyfriend one row over. They're trying to find a nitro stout and aren't seeing it because the aisle there in sorts by local beer and the one they want is from out of state, conveniently about two shelves over from me. I speak up and wander around the corner to let them know where I saw it, and they thank me and ask if I've had it before. We chat briefly about one or two others that we've had that are similar but not as good, and then I get back to my browsing. Then I feel a tap on my shoulder. Karen, excuse me. Me, sorry, am I in your way? Karen, no, but can you help me find where the brand of whiskey I'd never heard of is? Me, er, uh, what kind of liquor is that? Karen, I think it's a whiskey. Me, okay, do you know if it's a bourbon or an Irish whiskey or? Karen, pulling a mock sad face I don't, sorry. Me, well, the whiskeys are three aisles that way with the bourbons on the left side and everything else on the right. Unless it's scotch, which is over there. Karen, aren't you going to take me there? Me, sorry, I've got to pick up my own stuff and get home. 
There should be someone around here who knows the selection a bit better. Karen, I can't believe you won't help me. That's really rude. Me, lady, I don't work here, I just drink a lot. Karen, I want to talk to your manager. At this point, I was yet unseasoned to the ways of the mid-50s entitled boomer trash, so I shook my head and turned around to keep looking for my own stuff. I hear a soft, scorned little gasp behind me, and feel the nails digging into my shoulder. Preface, I am not a well-adjusted individual. I have a family history of untreated conditions and I was lucky to get out of primary, secondary school with PTSD and all of my teeth. My bodily autonomy and personal space are very important to me, and while I am patient and understanding in almost every other regard, this is one issue that you do not push with me. The split second between feeling her dig in and realizing what's going on, my brain's RPMs have buried the needle and I am half a restrained impulse from biting off her manicured princess fingers and gouging out her eyes. I opt instead to take a lesson from our primate cousins and Dragon Ball Z when crap gets bad, yell to assert your power. Me, with a roar so loud it left me hoarse for like two days after, get your hands off me. The store goes dead ducking quiet. I grab her hand, wrench it off me, and shove her away with both hands. She stumbles, bumps into a shelf, but doesn't fall over. She's looking at me the way a cow looks at an oncoming train, eyes saucer wide in disbelief and incredulity, the fear not quite managing to take hold yet. She opens her mouth to say something that was probably, how dare you, or something similar, but I'm already frothing at the mouth, every D&D &D barbarian player has a rage boner for what my face looks like right now. Me, still screaming and stumbling over my words a bit, never ducking touch me, ever. I will rip your cheap ass in half. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Every time it looks like she's going to interject I cut her off with another, leave me alone. By now management and one of the other associates are booking it over to defuse what they're sure is going to be imminent violence, and by all appearances they're right, my face is red, my body is shaking and while I'm not that big of a dude, I'm poised for a fight against a comparatively small woman. Manager, sir, you need to calm down. Me, I am calm, she needs to keep her hands to herself. Karen, he assaulted me, call the police. Me, not as loud, voice cracking, go ahead, lady, I'll wait. You started this. Associate, sir, I need you to come with me. Me, I'm buying my beer and leaving. Check your security tapes, she came after me first. Karen, to manager, I want him fired. Me, I told you, I don't work here. The duck is wrong with you. Manager, sir, I told you to calm down. Me, look at this. I pull my shirt collar over and show him where her nails dug in. There's no blood, but it's pretty obvious the marks are fresh and that I didn't do it to myself. Me, you want to get the cops involved, fine, pull the damn tapes and we'll talk about pressing charges. It seems to have dawned on Karen that she might have ducked up. She hasn't said anything. There's a crowd watching us at this point. I see at least one cell phone recording. I turn to a random person standing nearby. Me, did you see what happened? Young guy, not all of it. I saw her holding you and you push her away. Me, voice cracking like a teenager's, thank you. At this point I grab the six pack I was looking at and start to leave. Manager, sir, you need to. Me, I'm leaving. You want to call the cops, I'll wait for you to check the security tapes, but then I'm pressing charges. I walk towards the tills and set my beer on the counter. The attendant at the desk was looking over my shoulder at the manager but he must have given her the okay, because she scans me out and I leave with my beer. I made it about halfway home before I had to pull over and weep, the adrenaline crash hit me super hard and I ugly cried for like 5 minutes until I could get enough composure to drive. I didn't go back to that store for a few months. Either they don't remember me or it was settled after I left. Moral of the story, embrace your inner howler monkey. Don't give them a chance to think or wind up their usual indignant tirade. The next story is titled, My Little Moment in Hell. I had reported to work on this particular Monday where I am the site supervisor for an armed security account, only to discover that the blasted idiots that worked the night shift had not only left me an empty coffee pot, a mortal sin, but had entirely cleaned me out of coffee, leaving me naught but an empty container devoid of my much-needed morning caffeine, the inconsiderate so-and-sos. 
Grumbling, I go off to the local market to buy some caffeinated goodness so to keep my heart beating through my busy day. Mind you, I am in uniform, which means black pants, dress shirt with my badge and various security emblems, my duty belt with firearm, baton, handcuffs, etc etc. For the sake of those squeamish folk out there that go all white in the face when they see a firearm, I have also donned a windbreaker with security written across the back in 6 inches high day glow yellow letters. In other words, I looked nothing like any of the folk who worked at this market, whose uniform consisted entirely of a green apron. Now mind you, I probably could have handled this better, but I was grumpy. It was a Monday morning without coffee after all. So, I am standing just inside the door of the market reading the chalkboard where they have written their menu for the small cafe they run when this entitled wench, hereafter referred to as Ooh, on her cell phone, walks up to me, and tries to hand me a slip of paper. Okay, I'm a bit confused, but I take it and give it a look. But as soon as I do who makes a little shooing motion and walks away and sits down at a bench by the door. Never says a word to me, doesn't even really look at me, barely acknowledges my existence and just walks off. So I'm kinda annoyed you might say. Look at this piece of paper and it's a list of, you guessed it, groceries. Um. WTF? So I wander over and politely inquire as to what exactly this is and why she had seen fit to hand it to me. M, my grocery list of course, fetch them for me, I'm in a hurry and can't be bothered. I'm on a very important phone call. And again with the shoeing motion. Now, I've been going to this market for nigh unto five years, and I can assure you, they don't fetch your groceries for you. So, after some consideration, I very carefully rolled her list into a tight little ball, dropped it on her lap, and loudly growled at her to get off her lazy ass and do her own damn shopping, turn around and walk off. I hear her screeching out something behind me but I just ignore her and keep walking. Now at this point I am seriously thinking that Ooh will take the hint, see the day glow letters on my jacket and buy a clue. But oh no, Ooh is just not that smart, she instead chases me down and starts yelling about how she's going to get me fired and I need to fetch her damn groceries right now. Trying to remain calm, I politely, honest, but forcefully tell her again, very clearly, I don't work here, do your own damn shopping lady, and leave. Thinking that's the end of it, off I go to get a cup of wonderful hot coffee at the cafe and then move on to the Isle of Heaven, where I am busily perusing their fine selection of lovely roasted goodness, when who should appear but ooh with a gentleman in tow. She's loudly berating him about his lazy workers, and demanding I be fired on the spot. The poor gentleman looks confusedly at me, then at her and informs her, he doesn't work here, we don't employ security ma'am. Being a bit of a jerk, I wave at her, give her a big smile, and agree with him. Ooh absolutely loses it, goes completely insane. Starts screaming that I need to fetch her damn groceries right now or she is going to get us all fired, and she is an important person, and how we will regret treating her this way, blah, blah, blah. The gentleman finally gets a word in edgewise and again informs her I don't work there, and I don't have to do anything for her. That is when I can see a dim little bulb go off in her head, and can see a glimmer, tiny but there, of understanding begin to dawn in her eyes. This dim light is however quickly squashed by her overinflated sense of entitlement as she promptly replies in the snottiest voice possible, I kid you not, with Ooh, well, he's obviously a menial of some sort, make him. To say this got me a tad riled up is perhaps an understatement. I so I shoved a one finger salute into her face and told her emphatically to go screw herself. The gentleman quickly got between us and loudly told her, in no uncertain terms that one, again I did not work there, and two, that she needed to get the hell out of his store. Right now. Ooh literally screamed at the top of her lungs, no words, just rage, and started demanded to see someone in charge so she could get us all fired and someone better get her her damn groceries, and how she was going to sue us all, damn it didn't we know how important she was? The gentleman, who I had naturally assumed was the manager, promptly got right back in her face and yelled over her that he was the owner, his family had owned the place for 20 years, and they had never in all that time done someone's shopping for them, ever. He then grabbed her by the arm and literally dragged her off towards the front of the store. At that point I was just shaking my head in disbelief, but I just went ahead, made my selection of fine coffees, and wandered over to stand in line to pay for it. As I'm there at the register the owner came up to me and actually apologized for EW's behavior, and we shared a WTF moment. Actually ended up just laughing at how stupid Ooh was. Or crazy, either way. 
He even tried to let me have the coffee for free, but I thanked him and told him it wasn't his fault that U was a nut, and I was fine with paying for it. Now, you would think that that was the end of it, I mean, it was crazy, but weird stuff happens, people are idiots, whatever. But oh no, dear readers, it would appear that we had both underestimated the depths of EW's craziness, because as we walked through the door to the outside world, who to our astonishment was there waiting for us? Who it turns out had actually called the police on us and the dumb idiot was out there screaming at the officer demanding that we be arrested for not serving her, and how she wanted us both fired, and she was going to sue, and that someone had better get her her damn groceries right now damn it. My jaw dropped, I don't mind saying it, and I was beyond shocked. I honestly started laughing at that point. This lady was certifiably nuts. Because of my job we happened to work closely with the local PD, so I actually recognized the officer that had responded to the call and gave Officer Betsy a wave when she looked at me. She gave me a grin and walked over asking me about exactly what the hell was going on. We both gave our side of the story and the owner asked that she be removed from the property, please, as she was at this point causing a scene. Betsy just rolled her eyes, walked over and told U that she needed to leave right now, immediately, or she would be charged with trespassing. Now, you ever have that moment when you can see something bad start to happen, but your mind just can't quite believe it's actually occurring? Well, I saw it start, clear as day, as U reared back and started to go off again and yup, there it was, she actually jammed her finger into Officer Betsy's sternum, not once, but twice. Might have been a third time, but Officer Betsy had at that point picked her up, flipped her over, and dropped U on her head. Landed on top of her, had her handcuffed in record time, got back up, opened her door, slid U into the back of her patrol car and slammed the door on her. And we all just stood there shaking our heads in total disbelief as U started to scream and thrash about and kick at the windows of the squad car. She was still doing it as Officer Betsy drove off to the station too. Saw Officer Betsy later on that day, and she told me that U was still throwing a fit when they got to the station, and fought the officers there like hell, until they ended up stuffing her into a control chair. She was later transported to the hospital for a psych eval. No idea what happened to her after that. So that's my, I don't work here lady. Hope you enjoyed. Wow folks, I am completely blown away at the response this has gotten and thanks for the gold. If you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.